So the first show I remember you on anyway was the NBC Heads Up uh, oh, stuff. And like, man. I, I remember watching that and aspiring to be that, and I actually got to play one year. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to brag or anything. Wow. Well, I they, they had uh, two satellite seats that they were uh, oh, not giving away. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. One you was at play Caesars, in. right? I think yeah. it was like a, a 500 buy-in, like a satellite or whatever. And but it wasn't a heads up satellite, was it? Uh, it so you played down to 16, and okay. as soon as you got to 16, then it was heads up. Oh, and so then they bracketed it and yeah. you played down to one. It, based on your chip count. So like yeah. you know, the bigger chip count, got, Seeds. You know, like all that stuff. Or sure, whatever. sure. And I beat uh, Eric Baldwin in the semifinals and I went to the finals. I met this guy. I can't remember his name now. I, I'm embarrassed. But like either way, he's like, I don't even want to play. He's like, just buy me out for whatever and I'll just concede the match. And I was like, okay. And I think I gave him like 17,000 or something like that. I mean, it was, the seat was worth 25, but like, yeah. he was just giving it to me. Yeah. And like, I, I think I... Whatever. I, it's probably less. It's probably 10k, but I give him a piece of myself. The other way. Okay. But so anyway, you I was, so, is what you're saying. And well, this is a thinly veiled, not so thinly no, veiled I, brag. I, post. I somehow like turned a whatever the $500 satellite into me losing like twelve and a half thousand dollars. Oh, you lost. Because like I didn't win my first round match, by the way. So <laughs> okay. like you know, I was like, oh, and the success story is like I beat Helmuth heads up and for the title. No, I just. I lost Elky in the first round. I hope that show so doesn't seek. come back. <laughs> I hope that show doesn't come back just because I'm not sure with that revelation whether or not you're going to be allowed to play yeah. it again. That, it was, yeah, that's true. That, that's probably, it was probably <laughs> like, before. But I like, violated uh, all the T's and C's of the Sadie. I mean, just looking at him, I was like, oh, I'm going to crush this guy heads up. We're going to be fine. But like yeah. anything can happen heads up. Yeah. Like I just, I just want to be on the show so that's badly. Yeah. I didn't really care. Um, that's crazy. That was a long time ago, man. It was. I, I don't even like remember. Fifteen plus years ago. It was. Right? It was still at Caesars. I remember. And I remember they had like a red carpet, and it's the first time that like yeah. my wife came down. We took photos for like the the drawing. It was and stuff. an awesome. Was the draw nice. party was one of my favorite things because yeah. I've always had this little game show host like fantasy. So I get to like pull the balls and like mm -hmm. talk about everybody, and the matchup happens, and you make some little quick improv joke because you know some inside things or whatever. Yeah, I love that stuff, man. And I get to do it now with the mystery bounties at Triton, which oh, which is fun, man. Yeah, Jeez. Well, bring yeah. some levity to an otherwise like <laughs> yeah. very serious affair. So uh, how you got into there, I, I read anyway, it was basically you, you got to talk to Maury es Eskandarni, yeah. Who, yeah. who's been on the show as well. Uh, amazing podcast, I, I enjoyed it very much. Mm -hmm. But like, what, what was uh, that relationship like early? Like, I mean, how, like he just, Dude, he just he, snatched you up Papa Smurf world? just took me under his wing, man. <laughs> like he, he for sure like was just, but it was one of those, like, we, we literally crossed paths at the exact perfect moment in time, which, um, you know, involved sitting at a table on the party poker million cruise that Negranu and Lindgren played heads up on. E Dog had invited me. That was a limit, right? hold'em right, one. Right, yeah. um, Eric had invited me out, and he, um, he basically, uh, I was his cabin mate or whatever, played the thing. And we were playing cash games, uh, you know, in between the tournament or after, after you bust out, whatever. And uh, it's where I met James Woods, who still plays today in mm -hmm. Vegas and, and loves mixed games. And, uh, and then Maury was in the table. It was a 75-150 limit hold'em game. And he was, you know, talking about how he's going to get involved in poker production and this and that. And, you know, you hear a lot of stuff sitting at a poker table and you do. most of it's chirpy. I didn't know him, you know, I was like, <laughs> but I had brought at the, at the time, this is how the business worked, a VHS of my, my demo reel and my resume thinking I would pitch Steve Lipscomb, who at the time was the WPT guy. Cause I was like sitting on my couch and thinking to myself like, dude, I should be hosting all of this stuff. Cause like, I know all these guys I've been playing. There's not a lot of young people and definitely not a lot of people within television mm -hmm. who are involved in, in, in the industry. So um, he's talking about it and then we go up and he watches my demo reel and then he just like turns to me in disbelief and he's like, wait a minute, I just played four or five days of Limit Hold'em with you like, and you know the game and you know all of these people here and this is what you do? He's like, come with me. Just, uh, yeah, kind of grabbed me by the hand and just dragged me through every single thing that, that he did. And I say that not uh, in the pejorative. I mean, I, I was there for it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I remember working uh, Poker Superstars Invitational for Fox Sports at Casino Morongo. And it was like 19 hour days because the structure was insanely wrong. And, you know, value. But, um, <laughs> but I'm like on my Overtime. feet. Yeah, I'm on my feet, like on a riser on a set in dress shoes holding a mic where, you know, the mic is innocent enough in weight, but after hour 19, all of a sudden you realize one side of your collarbone is draped lower than the other. You're trying to balance it. My feet have completely seized in place. I'm like, this is crazy. 
Um, and yeah, the first hour of every day, Maury sprung for me to get a foot massage while I was still asleep, <laughs> just to work my feet to a place where I could stand on them for another 19 hours. And that's so Maury, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. he's just like, I got you. So, um, but yeah, I mean, paid my dues in that way. And I think it's, it's one of those things where oftentimes when you see someone get to a place in their career, like I feel like, you know, I, I've arrived at, um, you make this assumption like, oh man, this, everything was given. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this person just like lucked out and whatever. And sure, like there's some good fortune in terms of running into Maury when I did, but you know, I definitely worked my ass off and for not a lot of money for a very long time, you know, and you know, like to believe that I got better over the years with the reps and, and that I have some little privilege or gift or talent to make people laugh, which is definitely like my, my philosophy um, when I come into that booth. Cause I'm like, dude, it's poker. And like, we know our demographic, I think by and large. It, we want to say it's sports, but this isn't like Monday Night Football where Dennis Miller's going to get shooed out of the booth because <laughs> it's not the place. Good reference. You know what I'm good, saying? Yeah, yeah. Even though I love Dennis Miller, but yeah. like even I was like, mm, maybe not the place. A, you know yeah, what I mean? it was a bad spot for um, Or like Kornheiser too, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, so, but when, you're, when you have the privilege of like speaking to an audience, I think that definitely has an appetite for it. And you're talking about something that gives you, especially in the stream format where we're doing things live, broad swaths of time in between hands or decisions where you better be able to wax poetic and, and keep things interesting. And I feel like if you're gonna give me 30 or 60 minutes of your time, you know, in a crowded landscape where there is infinitely more content available than there will be, you know, eyeballs or time to ingest all of it, like you choose me, I take it seriously and I wanna make sure I entertain you and leave you feeling like I'm glad I made that decision and like I had a good time because I think that's what keeps people coming back. All right, if you like that clip, then you're gonna love the entire conversation. There's plenty more stories just like that one. So follow my finger, you can find it right here.